Hello class, let's discuss hydrostatic force on surfaces. We engineers predict hydrostatic forces on large structures such as dams. Thus, in this lecture, uh, I will explain to you how to relate pressure to force and how to calculate hydrostatic forces on panels, where a panel is a flat or plane surface. Later on in this lecture, uh, we will also determine the hydrostatic forces on curved surfaces. So let's proceed. So let's discuss first force of a uniform pressure distribution. So in solid mechanics, if we have a uniform pressure, um, if we are going to determine the equivalent force of that uniformly distributed load on a flat surface, uh, we can just easily determine the resultant force by multiplying that pressure to the area. And also, the location of that force is coincident with the center of gravity of that surface. So therefore, the center of pressure of this uniform pressure distribution is the same as the location of the center of gravity or the centroid of that flat surface. So, if we take a look at the cross section, okay, or the area that is perpendicular to this uniform pressure, let's say if this is a rectangular uh, plane surface, so our center of gravity is at the middle, okay, half the length and half the width, that's the location of your center of gravity. So, uh, if we have here a uniform pressure distribution, that's also the location of your center of pressure. Now, for hydrostatic pressure distribution, in determining the resultant force due to hydrostatic pressure, um, as we recall our previous lecture that uh, the pressure increases with respect to the depth of the particular fluid so it means that uh, it will give us a varying pressure distribution on a surface that is in contact with the particular fluid so here uh, as you can see in this figure our hydrostatic pressure increases with respect to the depth of that surface so it means that the location of our uh, equivalent uh, resultant force of this hydrostatic pressure is not the same as the centroid or the center of gravity of that flat surface. So if this is rectangular in cross-section, so this is your cent centroid or center of gravity. So our center of pressure is a little bit lower than the center of gravity. So how to determine this resultant force as well as how do we locate that center of pressure? So what are the formulas that we will use in determining the hydrostatic force as well as the location of that force? in a plane surface first one is we have f equals to gamma bar h times a so gamma is your unit weight of the fluid bar h is the distance from the liquid surface to the centroid or the center of gravity of that plane surface and a is the cross-sectional area of that surface plane surface so, that's how we determine the resultant force or the hydrostatic force. For the location of, of F or the resultant hydrostatic force, we have a formula of Yp is equals to Is over A times part Y. Is is the moment of inertia of the plane surface with respect to the liquid surface 
A is the area of the cross-sectional area of that surface, and bar Y is the parallel distance measured from the center of gravity of that plane surface going to the liquid surface. So if we will extend a line from the center of gravity parallel to the plane surface, that distance is your bar Y. So if, if the uh, plane surface is upright or there is no inclination of that plane surface, let's say this is your plane surface here, it means that your bar H and bar Y is just the same. Okay? But if there is angle of inclination of this plane surface, uh, your bar Y and bar H are not the same. So if we have a fully submerged plane surface and a liquid, so we have to transfer the moment of inertia with respect to the liquid surface. So by transfer moment of inertia, uh, we can have the solution of bar Y plus IG over A bar Y. So bar Y again, uh, the distance from the center of gravity to the liquid surface. And we have here the IG, which is the centroidal moment of inertia of that plane surface or the moment of inertia with respect to the center of gravity of that plane surface. So actually, this is a more useful solution in determining the, the location of the hydrostatic force. So the eccentricity is just the distance from the center of gravity and the center of pressure. So as you can see here on the uh, location of the resultant hydrostatic force, we have bar Y here, which is the location from the surface to the center of gravity is added by the centroidal moment of inertia over A bar Y. So it means that that additional uh, solution right here, which is IG over A bar Y, is just the solution in determining the eccentricity. So we must be familiar with the moment of inertia of any shape because the plane surface of the hydrostatic force that we may encounter is not always rectangular. It can be of any shape. So if you're not familiar with, na with the moment of inertia, of a particular shape. So you can review it here on these slides. Okay, so here are the properties of plane areas. So just take a look on the properties. Next, other types of triangles, isosceles, right triangle, triangle, a trapezoid, and circle. So uh, just take a screenshot of these properties and later we will use this in solving problems, okay? So just take note of the moment of inertia and the bar Y so that we can locate the center of gravity, okay? Other shapes such as circular ring, semicircle, quarter circle, and quarter circular spandrel. Okay, so let's now proceed in solving some problems. Sample number one, determine the force acting on the side of a concrete form 2.4 meter high and 1.2 meter wide that is used for pouring a basement wall. The specific weight of concrete is 23.5 kN per cubic meter. Determine also the location of the force on the form. 
So we have here a rectangular plane surface that is in contact with a fluid. So our fluid here is concrete. So since this is a newly poured concrete, it is still in its liquid form. So it has a specific weight or unit weight of 23.5 kilonewtons per cubic meter. The, the hydrostatic force on a plane surface is equals to gamma bar H times A. So we have a given unit weight of the fluid, which is the concrete, which is 23.5 kilonewtons per cubic meter. How about bar H? Bar H is just the vertical distance from the center of gravity to the surface of the fluid. So since we have here a rectangular plane surface, so just take one half of the vertical distance of this uh, of, of this plane surface, which is 2.4 divided to 1.2 meters. So that's your bar H, that is 1.2 meters. Since the plane surface is along the vertical, so it means our bar y is also equals to 1.2 meters. Okay. So for the area, just multiply base, which is 1.2 meters, by the height, 2.4 meters. So 1.2 times 2.4 is 2.88 square meters. So we can now solve the hydrostatic force acting on that surface. Okay. So we have 23.5 kilonewtons per cubic meter times uh, 1.2 meters is a 2.88 is square feet. so this will be cancelled out what it means is in kilonewton so kilonewton so it's a force 23.5 multiplied by 1.2 and 2.88 so the answer is 81.216 1.216 kilo newtons so that's hydrostatic force so that force is acting perpendicular to the plane surface but we don't know the location yet so to determine the location of the hydrostatic force so this is yp since that's the location for center of pressure um we can use the general solution of yp equals to bar y plus i g over a bar y. So bar y is also your bar h, which is 1.2, so 1.2 meters. So what is the centroidal moment of inertia of rectangle? We have B H cube over 12. Area, we have 2.88 square meter multiplied by uh, bar y, which is 1.2. So let's compute first the centroidal moment of inertia, Ig. So that's pH cube over 12. B is 1.2 meters. Uh, H, 2.4 meters cube all over 12. So we have 1.2, 2.4, uh, raised to 3 over 12. We have 1.3824 uh, uh, over 
meter raised to 4. So, going back to the solution, we have yp equals to bar y, bar y 1.2 plus 1.3 a to 4 meter is to 4 all over 2.88 square meter multiplied 1.2 meters. So let's directly solve this. 1.2 plus 1.3824 over 2.88 multiplied by 1.2. So the location of the center of pressure or the location of the hydrostatic force is 1.6 meters below the liquid surface. So your bar one here is 1.6 meters. Okay. So here's your F. So if we want to compute the eccentricity or the distance between the center of gravity and the center of pressure, so just compute this term right here. So to determine the eccentricity, uh, exclude 1.2. So, I think we, we can compute here is 0 0.4, okay, since 1.2 plus 0 0.4 is 1.6, okay, 0 0.4, if you compute this one, 0 0.4 meters, okay, that's how we solve this problem. Next. A triangular gate with base 4 meters and altitude of 3 meters is submerged in water. If the vertex of that triangular gate is 2 meters below the surface of the water, determine A, the location of center of pressure, B, the hydrostatic force on one side of the gate. So if this is your vertical triangular gate, uh, let's determine the hydrostatic pressure as well as its location say from the surface for the water from the water surface okay so this is triangle we have a base of four meters depth or altitude of the triangle is three meters so solution for the hydrostatic force we have a general solution of gamma bar h times a so bar h uh, is located from the center of gravity to the water surface. But we have to determine first what is the location of the center of gravity of this triangle. So the centroid of a triangle is one third from the base. So it means from the vertex, okay, that is two third, okay. That is two third of its altitude. So if we have a total height of three meters, uh, two third times three, that's two meters. Okay. So just we're just recalling here, class, the properties of plane surface. So if we will go back, here's your bar y here, h of h over three. So bar y is from the base to the center of gravity. So if you are measuring from the vertex to the centroid, that's two-thirds of the total altitude, okay? For the moment of inertia, we always use Ix in the solution for determining the center of pressure. So our centroidal moment of inertia, Ig, here is Ix. Same applies to any other shape. We always use Ix, Ix since the calculation for hydrostatic pressure is along the vertical. So same applies with moment of inertia. 
So if our location is at the center of gravity, so the axis to be considered is along the x-axis where it is located at the center of gravity. So always use ix. Going back. Two-third of 3 is 2 meters. And we have 2 meter distance from vertex to water surface. So the unit weight of water is 9.81. If there are no given here, we revert to using the standard reference temperature at 4 degrees, which is 9.81 kilonewtons per cubic meter. Bar H, so we can now measure bar H, which is the distance from the liquid surface to the center of gravity. Now S, 4 meters. So since this is a vertical triangular dip, your bar Y also is 4 meters. Okay. So bar H, 4 meters. A, area. Area, area of a triangle, 1 half base times height. So, one half of base, which is 4 meters, height is 3 meters. That is the area. Area, one half base times height, 6, 6 square meter. So, we can now compute the hydrostatic force, 9.81 kilonewtons per cubic meter. Uh, times bar h 4 meters area 6 square meter so hydrostatic force is 81 4 6 235.44 kilo newtons okay that's the answer now for the location use again the solution that is yp equals to bar y plus ig over a over y so actually we we solve first here letter b okay In this problem we solve first letter b the hydrostatic force and then we solve the location so, this is the solution. We already have bar Y, which is 4 meters. Uh, the centroidal moment of inertia. So, the moment of inertia with respect to the center of gravity of the plane surface. So, uh, as we recall, on the previous slide, we have pH cube over 36 plus with respect to x-axis is our moment of inertia that we're going to use here okay so bh cube over 36 so now we can now substitute the base which is 4 meters and height height is 3 meters cube over 36 so that moment of inertia is 4 times 3 raised to 3 over 36. That's 3. 3 meter raised to 4. So all are given now. Uh, we can now locate the center of pressure which is equals to bar y 4 meters plus 3 meter raised to 4 over area 6 square meter multiplied by 4 meters so the uh, unit remains is in meter so let's directly solve this 4 plus 3 over 6 times 4 equals 4.125 okay so that's 4.125 uh, meters let's put here from the water 
surface. And that's the location of your center of pressure. So, so if this is 4, we have an additional of 0.125. Or also, that's the, the eccentricity. Okay. So, here is this. Means uh, your hydrostatic force F is at 4.125 meters from the water surface. So let's say this is your center of pressure. Center of gravity is a little bit high. So, okay. So that's how you solve a uh, triangular plane surface. The hydrostatic force on a submerged triangular gate. Next problem. A vertical gate 1.6 meters wide and 2 meter high has water on one side and is inclined 45 degrees with the horizontal. Water is 2 meters above the top of the gate. We will compute here the hydrostatic force acting on the grid. Uh, location of the center of pressure from point B. Then, if the gate is hinged at the top, which is at point B, what force is needed at the bottom or at point A to open the gate? So, first, uh, we compute the hydrostatic force, which is uh, the AC part here. So, general solution for the hydrostatic force is gamma bar H times area. So again, uh, our hydrostatic force here is perpendicular to that plane surface. So uh, if this is your surface right here, which is rectangular in shape, so let's draw first the cross section right here. That's 2 meters by 1.6. So our center of gravity is right here in the middle, CG. So our center of pressure is lower, say so right there. So center or bar H is measured from the center of gravity going to the water surface. That's your bar H. Since this, there is an inclination of the plane surface of this gate right here, uh, we have bar Y that is measured parallel to the plane surface going to the water surface. So if we will extend this water surface right here, okay, the bar y is this distance. Okay. So let's compute first the, the hydrostatic force. So we already have here unit rate of water 9.81 kilonewtons per cubic meter bar h. So bar h, we can compute that by adding 2 meters by the vertical distance from point B going to, to the center of gravity or the vertical component of this distance right here. Okay, so the equivalent vertical component of of this distance from point B to the center of gravity. So, this distance right here. Let's say this is distance Y. Okay, this is distance Y. Uh, we will determine this distance here. So, the center of gravity, just take the half of the total vertical distance or the total length, which is 2 meters. So, half of that is 1 meters. Okay. 1 meters from point B to center of gravity. So given the angle, which is 45 degrees, so we can compute by uh, Y by 
applying trigonometric function which is either sine or cosine but here uh, we use sine because this is your angle here is 45 degrees so applying sine function we have opposite over hypotenuse so why therefore is a uh, one cos a uh, one sine 45 degrees so uh, just right here An additional uh, distance just one sine 45 degrees one sine 45 degrees is Zero point seven of seven, so two plus zero point seven oh seven meters. So your bar h here is two point seven oh seven. For the area, area is the cross sectional area of your uh, gate, which is one point six meter by two meter. So one point six by two meter is equals to 3.2 meters. We can now compute the hydrostatic force. So 9.81 kilonewtons per cubic meter times bar H, which is 2.707 meters times the cross sectional area, uh, 3.2. This is in square area is in square meter. So force is equals to 7.7 times 3.2. So uh, the static force 84.978 kilo newtons. That's the answer for letter A. For letter B, uh, location from point B. So, we are just required to determine the location of the center of pressure from point B. So, uh, if we have another drawing here, if this is your uh, center of gravity, and let's say here's your hydrostatic force, where the center of pressure is located, so, the eccentricity is your distance right here, from the center of gravity to the center of pressure. Since we already know the distance from point B to center of gravity, which is half of the distance from A to B which is 2 meters so that's 1 meter okay this is our cross section right here so this is 2 meters this is 1.6 uh, so here's the location for your center of gravity this rectangular plate rectangular surface so uh, we can just use the eccentricity in locating the center of pressure. So, for the eccentricity, we have a formula of centroidal moment of inertia over A times bar Y. So, computing the moment of inertia with respect to the center of gravity, we have B H cube over 12. The base here is the 1.6 meters and the height of that rectangular uh, plane surface is 2 meters. So 2 meter raised to 3 all over 12. So uh, moment of inertia is uh, 1.6 times 2 is 2 3 over 12 
1.067 meters. So, the eccentricity now is 1.067 uh, this is meter is to 4 over the area which is 3.2 square meter and bar y which is still unknown so for bar y uh, we determine the distance from the center of gravity so if you draw a line from the center of gravity going to the water surface so if we will extend this water surface right here, so this distance right here is your uh, bar y. Okay. So bar y is this line here, this color green. So to determine bar y, we already have one meter distance from center of gravity to point P. But this distance from point B going to the water surface is still unknown. So to determine this distance, let's say this is letter Z. This is letter Z. So we can determine that again using trigonometric functions since we have 45 degrees angle of inclination of this uh, plane surface. So to determine that, uh, is if we have here 2 meter depth, 2 meter vertical distance, applying trigonometric function, sine or cosine, uh, I think cosine because cosine of 45 degrees is equals to the adjacent side of the triangle, which is 2, over the hypotenuse, which is your z. So, this is considering this triangle right here. Okay. So, therefore, Z is equals to 2 over cosine 45 degrees. So, if we are going to determine bar Y, okay, before applying that to the eccentricity, uh, bar Y is equals to 1 meter plus 2 over cos in 45 so that's meters so let's compute bar y that's 1 plus uh, 2 over cos 45 3.828 meters so we can now solve the eccentricity which is 1.067 meter is to 4 over 3.2 square meter times 3.8 to 8 meters so uh, 1.067 over 3.2 by 3.828 equals 0 0.087 meters that's the eccentricity therefore uh, determining the distance from point b to the center of pressure uh, let's have another drawing that distance is one meter plus eccentricity so from b the location of the hydrostatic force from b is one meters plus eccentricity so that's one meter plus the eccentricity of 0 0.087 meters so the distance is uh, 1.087 meters so this is the answer for question in letter B. Okay. So next, uh, if the gate is hinged at the top, 
what force is needed at the bottom to open the gate. So to determine that force to be applied at point A, since we have a hinge here at point B, so the most effective direction for the force to be applied at this plane surface should be perpendicular to that plane surface. So in order to open that, we should apply force that is opposite the direction of this uh, hydrostatic um, force. So to determine this force right here, let's say this is F at A, okay, force at A, uh, we will just take the moment at B, okay? Take the sum of moments at point B, which is equals to zero. So assuming that all uh, clockwise direction to be positive so from point b taking the moment at point b we have force at a multiplied by its distance from point b so the distance is two meters minus uh 84.9 78 kilonewtons multiplied by the distance 1.087 Zero eight seven meters equals to zero. So, okay. uh, we make this positive. If we put this term, this term here on the right hand side of the equation, eighty four point nine seven eight kilometers times one point zero eight seven meters. So. 84.978 times 1.087 92.371 Divide both sides by 2 meters Kilometer meter So divide by 2 meters Forty six point one eight six kilo meters. So that's the equivalent force at point A to open the gate. So that ends the part one of our lecture on hydrostatic forces on plane surfaces.